In this video, I'll work through some sample problems relating to our introduction to combinatorics. So in this first example, we've got a fast food restaurant and we can have one or any of all of these topics that we have on our burger. So we could have ketchup or we could have not have ketchup, mustard or not, pickles or not, and onions or not. And so we're trying to figure out a way to organize this problem so that we can figure out how many possible combinations of toppings are possible. And one way to think about this one is to think about having a set that contains those toppings. So ketchup, mustard, pickles, and onions. And if we think about different possibilities here, so for example, we have our burger with ketchup, but not mustard and pickles and onions, something like that. Well, then that would be a subset of our set. Another possibility would be to have just mustard. That's also a subset. Another possibility would be to have no toppings at all. Another possibility would be to have all the toppings and so on. And so what we see is that each of these combinations of toppings is actually a subset of this set with four elements. In other words, the solutions can be represented as the power set of this set of size four. And since the question is how many possible toppings, what we wanna know is how many things are in that set. And we note that the size of a power set is that we raise two to the power of the size of the set itself. That's of course four, so that's two to the fourth, which would be 16 total possibilities. So again, thinking about the different possible combinations and how we might represent those leads us to a solution. Now, another problem, we've got a six-sided die and a spinner with three colors. And in this game, we're taking a turn by tossing the die and spinning the spinner. So we've got two separate things going on. And so this time it might make sense to represent this as a table. So in this table, in one direction, I'm gonna represent the results of rolling the die. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then across the top of the table, I'm gonna represent the result of the spinner, which is red, white, and blue. And so each entry in the table is a different result. So for example, I could roll a three and spin red, or I could roll a five and spin white, or I could roll a two and spin blue, and so on. And I could fill in this entire table with all these different combinations and again, each of those boxes would represent one of the combination. Well, this grid is has six rows and three columns, which means it has six times three, which is 18 total entries. So that's how many different results we would get from rolling this die and spinning this spinner. Now, this last question is a little bit different. So this is not actually asking us to solve this problem, although we could do that, again, by being organized and arranging our information in a particular way. But this is asking us, why are these two problems combinatorially equivalent? Now, what combinatorially equivalent means is that we can find some kind of correlation, some kind of correspondence between the solutions to one problem and the solutions to another problem. So let's first take a look at how many two element subsets does the set one, two, three, four, five have? Again, the goal is not to answer this question. The goal is to figure out why the two questions have the same answer. So when we think about two element subsets, we're thinking about things like the set containing one and four, the set containing two and three, the set containing four and five, and so on. Those are the kinds of things we're talking about. For the second problem, we're talking about a World Series, which is a best of seven match, and we're wondering how many ways are there for Team A to win in exactly six games. So one of the things you have to know about a best of seven match is that the winner is the first team to get four wins. Now, maybe you already knew that if you're a baseball fan or if you're familiar with other games like this, but when we're playing best of seven, the idea is that the only time you need a seventh game is if you're tied all the way to that seventh game. In this case, that would mean three and three because you've played six games and you're tied. So one team won three and one team won three. So you need that seventh game to figure out who the winner is. And you don't always play seven games. Sometimes the series only lasts four games. If one team wins all four games, series is over. Sometimes it lasts five games, sometimes it lasts six games, and sometimes it lasts seven games. So the question here is, we want team A to win in exactly six games. So we could think of this as an ordered list with six entries. And in each entry, I'm gonna write A or B. And I'm gonna write A if A wins the game, and I'm gonna write B if B wins the game. 
But if Team A wins the series in exactly six games, that means that after that sixth game, the series is over and A won, which means A had to win that last game, right? You don't play the last game and B wins that game and then Team A celebrates, like, hooray, B won, right? That's, that's not how that works. If the series is over, the team that won the series must have won that last game. So there's no doubt about who wins that last game. Whereas there, there's the doubt is who won the previous five games. Well, we know that Team A won the series, which means Team A won a total of four games. We know Team A won the sixth game, which means of these three remaining games, three of these are A's. And in particular, that means two of these are B's. If B lost the series in six games, A won four games and B won two of them. And so the question would be, which two games did B win? And that's where our correspondence is going to come from. So for example, if we had the set one comma four, the corresponding series would be that B won game one and game four, and then A would have won the remaining four games. And so that's how we can see that the number of two element subsets is the same as the number of ways that team A could have won this series in exactly six games. And the reason why this is a useful thing to be able to do is that this first question is much, much, much easier to solve. We're going to find a formula very soon for how to find the number of two element subsets of a set of size five. It's gonna be a pretty easy problem for us to solve. Thinking about series and games like this is a lot trickier if you don't realize that you can actually make a correspondence between that seemingly harder question and the easier question about subsets. So that's why combinatorial equivalence is an important idea.